Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to Take on Mars. This is Sandbox and it concludes the Europa update content. So I've got the bug fixes, patches, updates, and we also have new content, new vehicles, new tools, new resources, new machines to build and build from. Okay, so Mission out black, so mission out ultimate mission goal, I should say. Mission profile. So what I'm aiming to do I'm aiming to build a science outpost fully equipped with laboratory, at least one full fully equipped laboratory, pressurized habitats, as well as the work area obviously. Our vehicles a comms tower, at least one weather station, one weather, out, weather outpost or weather observation station for up to 10 personnel and it's going to be located at the southern polar region of Mars so that's the most inhospitable place you can actually go within these particular the existing scenarios Okay, so I'm going to jump straight in. When I jump in, I'll be in the MAV, or the Manned Ascent Vehicle. For some reason, BIS, Bohemian Interactive Studios, the developers of this game, call it the Mars Ascent Vehicle. But you actually get the same MAV, regardless whether you go to the Moon, or Europa, or Mars. So, I'm going to hop straight into the Manned Ascent Vehicle. Okay, so here we are in the ascent vehicle directly behind us is the habitat which is our place to start our mission so the landing sequence is actually fully automated so I'm going to switch to the external camera so you can all see exactly what the terrain looks like as, as we descend down to the surface. Okay, so here we go. So if you notice just to the left of the screen, you can see the, the two cargo pods, one of them is down the edge of this sort of precipice where we've landed. Got a large expanse over there. But I think this is cheating. It's like it's down over here, it's cheating. Okay. I can actually take my helmet off as well, I forgot about that. Okay. Back on standby. Turn the light off. Hop out the seat. And let's get going. So first I'm just going to show you around the, uh, the habitat. Show you a few places. Sleep area. <coughs> Bit of a hard landing there. Close that. And don't pull a lever until you put your helmet back on. Let's cycle the airlock. Open the outer hatch. 
look at the ladders and tap E. I don't know why they did it like that, but uh, that's how you have to do it. Then crawl out. And the safest way, unless you want to risk cracking the helmet visor and killing yourself, because that hatch there, when you close the hatches, if that hatch there, the one inside, and this hatch, it can often hit you in the face and crack your visor. So I hop down here. Then move back out. Stand back up again. Move back. And you can close it from here. So I'm going to close that hatch, which I already have done. I'm going to cycle the airlock. I'm going to try to. Well, what I did do. There we go. Three and third times the charm. So that basically allows that airlock now to be pressurised. So now there's two sets of seals protecting the inside of the, the craft itself. Because this game can be quite sneaky. And it can cause things to stop working, or not work at all. Right, so, let's close this hatch. As you notice that the middle, the mid right hand side of the screen right now, there's a, what's like a thermostat, a yellow thermostat with the arrow pointing down, it means we're getting cold. I'm just going to go outside for a second. Yes, yeah, so this is the southern polar region of Mars. So where are those cargo pods? Oh, I think they're on the other side. Yeah, getting cold quite fast now. It's minus 85.3. We've only got a light suit on. So there's the car on the cargo pods. The other cargo pod is just there where I'm pointing to. I'm not much mistaken. Yeah, we've got no we've got no male protection from the elements in this suit. Let's see. There's the other one. So I've got two cargo pods. I'm not gonna open them yet. Not just yet. Well, that was I thought we'd oh, the door missing then. Into the loading of the model. Okay, so the cargo pods are to the south, which is good. Right. Let's head in and get warm. You can see the arrow is going upwards now. Not quite as fast as, as fast as it was going downwards though. So it takes a while to warm yourself up. So this is the EVA chamber. Which is the equipment room actually. I like to call this the EVA airlock because the one at the other side is a double external door, this is a single external door. And I think the reason is because the other door, the other chamber, the other airlock chamber is a double outside um, external hatch. So you can bring the equipment in. And that's a science airlock I like to call that. That's, that's a science bay airlock. Okay so this is the uh, tool room. And this is one of the tools, this is the range finder. It's a laser beam to measure distance. That's pretty much, I think binoculars actually have those now on Earth. Oh, it's only space age technology. Okay, this is a gas sampling tool. It's what we use to take samples of the atmosphere. It's a soil sampling tool. It's a scope, not a drill. So it only takes samples from soft Earth, well, soft Martian soil. 
This is a drill. Use this to get samples of, of rock. Well, substrate actually. So we get core samples from that. There's obviously the EVA suits. These are med med medium suits and there's the heavy EVA suits. The heavy suits are really only suitable for sort of travelling around in a vehicle like the buggy. Because the slide, if you walk in places, you're going to slow you down too much. This is a medical tool. Yeah, as you can see, we've got calories, vitamins, water, sleep, and we've got radiation. So you can actually receive a lethal dose of radiation, either over duration of time or instant if it's a bit, if it's really bad solar flare. So our temperature is 36.53, and your fitness is average. So all those look okay. I'm going to put that back in. Well, you have to look after you. You have to sleep, eat, and drink. So these are the construction tools. I think you've probably seen these before in the previous videos or elsewhere on YouTube. You can't do anything without these. Okay. I think that covers the uh, basic equipment. Okay. You can't cook anything, at least not yet. So what you can do is eat cold beef steaks, which doesn't sound very they don't sound very appetizing cold beef steak, but But I expect they're probably in one of these sort of mountaineering sort of survival packs where you just have to pour water into them and the bones by themselves in a bag. So I'm gonna put some potato seeds on to grow at some point, but not just yet. The main reason is because there's no sunlight. Not on the moment, anyway. But I think the sun is over towards that direction. Once you've been there where we are, the sun will go around 24 hours. So a perpetual sunlight, but just not coming in through this window. So I th think we've got enough got a good few days worth yeah I've got a good few days worth of these beef ration packs or a good few days worth that's brilliant so I've got three cupboards full of them you need about two maybe two maybe three a day so we've got the vitamins here each contains 10 days worth so that's 60 days worth there the 60 days worth eventually we're going to have to wet grow our own food and right now we've got his potato seeds I don't know about you but I don't really fancy eating raw potatoes I don't need any water see these water packs here are good for doing EVAs with so you take these with you when you're matching the habitat I prefer just to drink directly from the water it saves your uh, It saves your, uh, your water packs. So I've got the map. Well, actually, it's not a map. It's an information. So well, that's that's apt. There's an apt name for a habitat on the South Pole. Sunset. South Polar Cap. It's 1356. Let's have a look at the map. So I saw some very nice flat areas. Some very nice flat areas. The map, yeah. We have got this huge flat area that'd be ideal for putting the base down. Yeah, that's massive. That's huge. 400 meters roughly across each of these grids. So that is a so 400, 5, 600 meter across radius base. That's big enough, I think, for the ten people. Okay. Let's pop it into standby. Alright. So three bedrooms, each of them with two bunks. And storage space. So there's a three bedrooms there. Shower unit and a 
it does work. And I've actually done this before. Show people around. And this is the throne room which I used before. Same terminology. Now the tapping there works. The hob doesn't work. But this tap here, the wash base in the bathroom, in the, sorry, the toilet, doesn't actually work. Which is surprising to me. Considering the level of detail and everything else. Okay. So I'm going to wait to. I'm going to use these. I'm going to try not to use these window boxes to you to play to to play to actually plant these potato seeds because they're not going to get much in way of sunlight anyway here. So I'm going to need a hydroponics bit. That would actually be better. That way I'm not going to risk wasting seeds and thereby ring it run out of food eventually. Which is what will happen if I'm allowing those beef sticks. It's not going to last forever. It's only a few days worth. So it's the science bit. There is the oh dear, I left the airlock open. Cycle it. There we go. So that's what I meant. This is the double hatch, external hatch, double external hatch there. So you can actually bring crates in through here. So that's actually better for bringing stuff through. So I call that the signs bit airlock. So here's the lab itself. Lab equipment there. This is where you analyze samples, whether it be core samples, substrate samples, gas samples in the atmosphere, and soil samples. I've got plenty of storage space here. So that's nice. So, yeah, and unlike the previous videos, which is on the manned campaign, we've got a full stack of tanks oxygen, hydrogen, water, and of course, either side, two methane tanks and a full tank of fertile soil. Turn the light off. So, first things first, I need to get some samples and see exactly where. The resources are. We'll tap on the M key. Yeah, so each area these each one of these blocks is an area of resources. Right now it just tells you the total. So total is eight million Mars rock, nine million Mars soil, and six point five million Mars atmosphere. Now from what my experience, you don't get anything extra from Mars soil that you can't get from Mars rock. So in this area, in the Arctic, it's going to be very difficult to get hold of Mars soil. If I'm not much mistaken, because all this area is frozen. But a drill, as opposed to a scope, a drill could get down and get some rock from directly underneath the, uh, the actual permafrost or ice is it called? Natural ice itself which could be several inches thick and the sampling tool for soil and the soil, top soil extractor only have a soft soil scoop on them try to send that one through quickly so it's only got a soft scoop so it's only, it's only, a, it's only a delicate scoop not like a drill bit okay so so we're not going to plant any potatoes in those windows. Actually, I might plant some potatoes in the window boxes a bit later on when the sun comes around here. Because for some reason, even though I'm playing real skill, which I failed to uh, mention, I'm playing this in real time, for some reason the potatoes still grow at, at an accelerated rate. So I'm only surmising that there may be some sort of genetically modified version of our own potatoes we have right now. But they really do grow fast, a few minutes. So, so I'm going to get. 
I'll leave the light on just in case it gets a little bit too dark outside. So I'm not going to bother with the atmospheric till just yet. I'm going to take some samples using the drill from the local area. I'm going to grab the sampling till as well. Solar sampling till, sorry, they're all sampling tills. I'm going to grab the medium suit. Gives you about 50 minutes to an hour moving about. Depending if I'm running about or just walking or stood still. Alright, so the uh, supply pottery is just there. It's actually quite nice and close there. Okay, let's head out. Oops. Take some samples from about here. So I deploy the till, kneel down, and take a sample. So that's one sample. That's one rock sample, anyway. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get a soil sample because this is a hard surface, but I'm going to try. Yeah, I didn't want to do that, but never mind. Let's try it. Again. No. It may be possible to get some samples of the soil in some of these sort of protected areas. They could sort of be protected for the worst weather because they just lower down this high ridge. Yeah, so not to worry. Like I said, you're not going to get anything else from Mars soil that like you're not going to get from Mars rock anywhere. So just grab that. It might be quite possible to find something along here. It looks like a high area, like a, uh, a raised area up here. So this could be the side of like a, like a risen area. A bit like here. So that could be protected enough to actually expose some of the soil itself. Could be. Probably not, but it's not a big, it's not a major disaster because we, we don't get anything else from soil that we can't get from rock, like I said. Right, it's nice weather. Right, so we've got the sun about there. So about six hours time it should be exactly. Just to the east, just south of east, I suppose. That's north. Just north of east, sorry. So it'll be over there. Probably be night, so for the six hours. And it should be ideal to plant some potatoes in there, get some sunlight onto it. Well, that's what you can call it. But, so. Right, so where have we taken? Samples. Okay, so we're going to get samples there. So I'm going to get the buggy out. I'm going to head west and get some samples from out here. That we've got an entire area mapped. Because yeah, basically, you take one sample from this area, and it maps in almost the entire area around where my mouse point is going. So around map this area. So you don't actually have to sort of take individual samples in every single square. I want to get the buggy out. Stand back because I can go a little bit silly. So 
I'm going to head. That's something that is a little bit difficult to get used to. You can't see the compass or the rest of the hood really all that well. In fact, it's practically impossible right now. So that's east. So we're going to be heading that direction, so it's west. Because I can't actually see where on earth I'm. Is that west? Yeah, there we go, there's west. There's no actual options in the options section of making the hood any brighter or a different colour. I don't think there is. I did have a do a look and I've never actually been able to find anything that changes the uh, the colour of the hood. Yeah, I have no idea what I just did just then. Can I stand up again? Thank you. Oh, there we go. Resource yield around here would be. Let's just head down. Oh, dare I, oh, I dare risk it going down there. If I slip and crack my helmet, that'll be it. No, no, no I'm not risking that. Doing the vehicle, though. And smash all four wheels. saying if you now cut the actual ridge of the this low area it looks like exposed rock so I wonder if somewhere in this area there could be some exposed soil as well so we'll take some rock samples from here So that is two core samples. I'm going to take another one. So I'm here. So I'm a little bit further west to about this ridge. Take some more samples there. One sample, I should say. It's be perfect. It's shielded as well from the red, well, most of the bad weather. So I can put some mine, some jewels down here. So that's a good area. It's a good area to mine. So also the builders have to work too hard to get to the rock itself. Two 
two way. Oh, cost me. So this is the edge of the, yeah, I mean, look at that. It's pretty obvious that Mars had liquid oceans at one point. I mean, look at that. You can see it. This is a coastline. And there's the beach. All right, let's take a sample from here. Yep, so I'm right up against, so this is a lower area, not a higher area. It goes down, and then this ridge here goes down even further to looks like an ocean. If that's not an ocean, then it's a large lake at least. You can see it just there. Definitely a coastline. Let's take a sample. So that'll be three samples we've got to analyse. thinking if we get down there at some point there's allowed to be some exposed soil down there there could be especially when that dark area right there is where my crosshairs is pointing to right now that looks very promising okay let's head back there's no point trying to take a soil stamp around here because it's just it's just not gonna work Don't look any different than where we've already been. You can see the habitat in the background there. And the snow, the weather, does actually ev erase the uh, tracks, including your footprints as well. sample from down there.
Wow, another one. Crikey. Right, so what I'll do... I'll take a sample from between both of these. We should get full scan of both. I'll head back and analyse these samples. Should hear that wind. Oh, that's nasty. Temperature now. Mars 85.6 degrees. And it's 1417. I'll take another score sample. Perfect. So that's four samples which covers just about the entire area to the west of the habitat. I mean I could sort of do another scan of the area to the to the east. But where we took it from right outside the front door. One of these doors just here. No, actually it's from here, isn't it? It should cover this area anyway. And that is another flat area. With a low lying area just here. So it's all pretty much ideal to take samples on and then set up drilling sites. But for that we need large refiners, not small ones. And so it tells me probably being, we never in very I've never known to be give the actually any of these sort of sandboxes to get large refiners or large drills or anything else. You've got to sort of work your way up to that. I don't know why. Take a sample from down here as well. So that gives us five samples. Yeah, and look at the exposed rock here. That's exactly what I said. It's so these low areas are like are like craters actually, but they're shielded from most of the bad weather. So the jewel won't have to work anything like as hard if you put them down here. Five. That's basically it. That's all I can do.